All right, what is up, YouTube boxing family? It is uh, uh, seven four three five here. I'm back with another good boxing video for y'all today. So yeah, let's get right to it. Um, we're gonna be talking about uh, Mr. Xander Sias and his uh, potential opponent. That I am not too sure that that. Um, I'm not too sure on who he is uh, potentially facing, but uh, the thing about it is I'm hoping it's a good opponent, and I'm hoping it's worth, you know, the competition, and I think he's going to get there to the higher level, because, you know, this is Xander's, if I'm not his, like, what, f like, like, uh, 14th fight, right? And I mean, I just find that really crazy, because, like, he's been... Uh, in the pros for almost like two years or actually two years to be exact but yeah he is 13 and 0 with nine knockouts and he will be heading into his 14th bout which could be rumored to be on the same day as Edgar Belenga probably as pro possibly as a co-main event for the Puerto Rican Day weekend uh, fight so I wanted to talk about that because I find this very interesting of how top rank is moving Puerto Rican fighters and it seems like that they're giving these fighters a lot more opportunities to fight uh, but the issue that I have is just the level of competition that they're feeding them because if you're just giving these dudes just more time to be active then now we can understand why the competition on the PBC is actually better because you actually have like guys that are constantly fighting each other but the problem with the you know, like with the top rank and PBC business side of stuff is that PBC, they have their shows constant more than top rank. And, you know, top rank, you know, they have, you know, set, you know, fixated dates where, you know, like you don't really have too much of like a freedom to decide like where you want to go. And I mean, if you want to stay active outside of top rank, uh, I'm not so sure if that breaches, you know, like your contractual um, obligations, but, you know, like, I just find that really weird of how top rank moves what? their fighters versus, like, fighters on the PBC. We can easily tell that, you know, guys like, you know, Yoelvis, you know, Gomez, you know, he can easily get fights on, you know, Dizona Matrim or top rank, but, I mean, if he's doing it off of, like, a free agent, you know, like, you know, fight-by-fight -fight basis type of of like you know type of uh like type of um setup uh then i can see why he's doing that but he obviously doesn't need to do that because like the pbc is giving him fights that he wants so therefore he like you know he's training for those high level fights but for xander's case you know he's not like he's not being moved to the right direction where you know like where uh, um oh shit where we can say that Xander Xander needs to be fighting this guy and that guy and therefore he can start building himself, you know, as a fighter so that way we can like you know like um like so that way we can see how good he is in his potential skill level to be um at that level. And uh I don't know, man. Like I think honestly Xander like you know Xander really needs to start you know, pumping, you know, the, like, um, he needs to start pushing, like, you know, the, the, the uh, needle, um, a bit more to see how far he can scale, because I think he's good, I, I think he can easily do what he needs to do to be successful, but, I mean, if you're just feeding him, you know, like, opponents that we already know that he can beat, then, you know, like, I'm not really gonna, you know, have to, yeah, yeah, like, I'm not gonna support that, like, I, don't like that out of Xander, and I like to see Xander grow as a fighter, but, like, you cannot tell me that, you know, you know, top rank needs to build him up to, like, what, 20, like, you know, 20 plus fights, and then, you know, like, you know, like, um, by time when in, he's, um, basically ready to get up to that world title stage, he's not, you know, performing at the level that we wanted him to perform, because he wasn't built up properly with all the tough, like, you know, tough level fights, and I think uh, that's, you know, just horrible because it's like, you know, like we already know how top rank moves, you know, but they're fighters, you know, like as far as, you know, the uh, political matchmaking goes. But it's like, you know, like when um, it's time for Xander to cross over to the other side of the street, 
like PBC or DAZN or whoever, I think that's really where everything's just going to fall into a trap where Xander, he, um, he's not going to be ready. And I think somebody that we, you know, potentially never knew um, would possibly just end up beating him. And I don't like to say that, but I just think that based off of how he is moving, it's just, you know, of, of um, it's very obvious to show that Xander, he's very comfortable with uh, top ranks uh, decision makings to uh, basically like give him you know, free, you know, uh, um, easy money fights where, you know, he, um, he doesn't have to take that much, uh, punishment and he's going through fights where he knows he can win. So I'm, I'm just not too sure of like what the whole idea mindset is for top rank, but I would like to just, you know, understand like, is this how they try to build up like a world championship level fighter? Because, I don't like to see that. Like, this is not proper business. And I think Xander, he's just taking advantage of it versus actually demanding, like, these, you know, high-level name fights like, you know, a uh, Nathaniel Gallimore or possibly, like, a Leon Lawson or anybody out of the top 100. Um, I think Xander, he can very well uh, dominate you know, like, you know, a good number of the, uh, top killers at, um, 154, but, um, I just don't know how he's going to scale because what the problem is, is just that Xander puts himself in these easy level fights. And I mean, don't get it twisted. Like, I mean, that like the Quincy Levi fight was a good fight, but at the, like, um, at the, um, end of what the day, Xander was not, you know, putting himself in a good position where, he had like you know um any tough fight per se and and i don't think that's you know like really there for him and i just think um you know he like you know um he's having like these type of fights where you know not a lot of his opponents are like punching him back and actually giving him a tough fight and to me um i i personally don't like that cuz you know, compared to any, you know, um, all-time Puerto Rican great, like a Miguel Cotto or Carlos Ortiz, uh, they always, you know, demanded tough fights. You know, they never wanted to take these um, easy, you know, touch them type of fights. And I think uh, Xander, he's going the wrong uh, direction um, in, um, in, in terms of who he's trying to fight. And I don't think um, he's, you know, um, like uh, putting himself in the right position to be world championship level, uh, um, like um, um, fighting, uh, um, fighting material. So uh, I would say like my biggest problem is that um, if top rank is not moving him to the direction where he needs to be fighting guys that are in the top 100 uh, then I'm definitely going to be criticizing him because once he gets to his like 20th bow and 20 something, like, you know, 20 something odd fight, then there has to be some questioning on how he's moving because, you know, but the way he is moving now, I understand like, like some people want to say, well, you know, he's only 19 years old, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, that's good to be 19 years old and gain experience, but is it going to be okay when he becomes 21 years old or 22 years old, which I kind of see like what Xander is trying to do. He's just trying to take like the most easiest fights possible so he can just stay busy. But the problem with this is that you need to start being tested young and early because it's like I can see Xander be developed like Jerron Ennis in a way where he could be like a really, really, really good fighter. But the problem that I have is that if you're not testing yourself with all those you know, high level up and coming veterans or young up and coming uh, superstars that are that that could potentially fight you in, um, in your weight class, then I would say that's a waste of talent because you're not putting yourself in there uh, with all the dangerous level um, opposition. Because once Jermel Charlo or Brian Castaño leaves after they get their um, second rematch for Undisputed out the way. Uh, the next line of rostered, um, you know, super welterweights that are very well going to take over the uh, division 
will very well be either maybe Sebastian Fundora. Um, I would say maybe, uh, man, I don't even know. Honestly, like, Super Welterweight is um, extremely um, loaded, but the problem is, is just that um, when you put yourself, you know, in there with these guys, you don't know what the style is going to be, but I think, like, you know, there's going to be guys like, um, like, you know, Trevon Marshall, um, um, I think he's going to be up there. I think uh, guys like, um, man, I don't even know, man. I think, shit, like, I think guys like Leon Lawson will pro like will possibly be there. Um, man, I don't even know, man. Jesus Ramos Jr., most definitely. He can definitely be up there t to be potentially fighting Xander. Um, I think uh, there's like a whole lot of talent that we just don't know until they actually fight um, each other that will be up there in the high level um, high level rankings in the super welterweight division. Uh, but I just don't see Xander's like you know progression actually getting any better because if he's fighting like you know like a bunch of these soft touches, a uh, minus from the Quincy um, Lavalle fight, then I just don't like to see that because you know that was just terrible uh, that one fight where he had with. Um, who that um like i think i think he was that um italian dude alessio uh something but uh basically when he fought that dude i was just like dude you know but that's like such a trash ass fight and i was just you know absolutely pissed off and i was just like dude like you know having fights like that does not um interest you know people like me that want to see you fight the high level names and i think like honestly like for people that do go out there to go see him that's pretty much like a waste of like you know like you know that's a waste of uh, financial um resources to go see like a fight where xander just blows some dude out um in on um, one round but that's not helping him grow same thing with the uh dan carpensi fight you know like i don't think dan carpensi is that good of a fighter He's only known for, you know, basically losing to a bunch of high, um, like, like basically high level rookies like, uh, Joey Spencer. And then he lost to Vito, uh, Milnecki, which, uh, surprisingly Vito Milnecki, he's actually, uh, uh, well, he actually fought like, you know, Dan Carpensi, uh, not too long ago from the, um, Errol Spence and, um, um, your Dennis, um, Ugas, um, undercard, um, on the, uh, preliminaries, but, uh, the reason why that I find that funny was because, uh, Vito turned down a offer to fight James Martin, or he basically, like, had the opportunity to rematch James Martin, but James Martin had, uh, like, you know, had came in, um, overweight, uh, for that fight, so the Vito decided to just basically fight at 147, and, uh, surprisingly, um, he basically said, Oh, well, you know, like, I fight at 47, James, you know, fights at 154, um, I don't need him, blah, 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 but yet here you are, m like, basically moving up to, um, 154, fighting a guy like, you know, Dan Carpensi, to which, you know, nobody, you know, ever asked for him to fight him, but he decided to take that fight, um, anyway, and that just pretty much showed that Vito basically, you know, avoided James Martin. To which, like, you know, I will give Xander credit for the James Martin fight and the Quincy Lavalle fight because uh, those are good, like, you know, good high-level victories. And I think those wins will, uh, uh, like, you know, um, age very well. But the issue that I have is just how he's basically just uh, being moved because um, if he's basically getting these uh, soft uh, touches, then I don't want to see that. Um, I don't want to see these type of fights where... You know, I, I like um I um already know how the fight's basically uh, going to play out, and I just find that to be very terrible. You know, for boxing fans that want to see Xander grow, uh, me included, that you know actually do support him, and I just think you know that's just a disgrace and a disservice to you know the fans that actually do like Xander that actually want to see him, you know, like you know uh, develop. But the problem, like, you know, that I have is just that Xander, he's not putting himself in these, you know, 50-50 matchups. 
And that's just not good. Honestly, like, I don't like that. That's just poor, uh, you know, business management on his team to not give us, you know, about the fights that we want to see. And I just don't like that. Uh, but I like to see Xander fight some high quality competition. And I'd like to see him face anybody from the top 100 to, I would probably say, maybe the top 50. Like, I could very well see him face, like, a guy like Bakram Murtazaliev, Israel Madrima, you know. Like, I think he could beat those guys. Like, it's not like Xander, he's trash, you know. He's, like, a very, very good fighter that, you know, that has, like, the skills to dominate his uh, division. But the problem is, is just that... If you're not putting him, like, you know, um, if you're not putting him in there, you know, like, um, with those guys now, and then you're just waiting for those guys to either beat each other out or just get better, then I don't think that's a good move. I think that's a really shitty move, and that's just really poor business, you know, from his team to give us what we want to see, to have him be tested early, and then he can be rewarded for it later. So, therefore, he can become a world champion because, you know, that's really what we want, right? So, like, it, uh, like, like so um, if we want to see Xander become a world champion, then I think Xander, he needs to start fighting these guys now. So, that way, um, he's not going to put himself in a bad, like, you know, um, in a bad um, position where he's going to get screwed over. So, I mean, that's just me, though. But I just think um, how Xander is just currently being moved right now, uh, it's just... Like, you know, poor, like, a uh, business from a uh, top rank. And uh, I just don't see how top rank is giving Xander all these, you know, um, easy pick em fights. To which I just think that's just going to lead him into a trap where he's going to end up getting, you know, smoked by some dude that we don't know. And uh, I think it's just, you know, horrible, you know? Like, I don't want to see that. So, yeah, like, I mean, honestly, I don't know, man. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think Xander is being moved properly? And who do you think he's going to fight on Puerto Rican Day Parade um, weekend on June 11th, if I'm not mistaken? So, yeah, let me know. And, uh, yeah, man, I will very well see you guys. And, uh, yeah, salute to the mighty LDBC. And this is Kieran Rodriguez. I'm signing out. Bye.